Hi, I'm George, and in this Photoshop review, we'll be looking at extensions from Anastasi. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well, and check out my channel for more great reviews. All right, let's get to it. First off, I want to thank the kind people at Anastasi for sending me review copies of these extensions so I can show you how these will work with Photoshop. Anastasi is a company that makes extensions for Adobe products, and right now they have six available. Magic Tints, Magic Picker, Magic Squire, Mixed Colors, Disk Fonts, and Magic Refs. Now, Magic Tints allows you to do color grading and tinting between images and even between images and color swatches as well for some really interesting effects. Magic Picker is an improvement upon the color picker inside of Photoshop. Magic Squire is a brush organization tool. Mixed Colors is a color mixing tool that works very, very well with Magic Picker. Disk Fonts is a font organizer. And then Magic Refs is an organizer for reference imagery. We'll be taking a look at two of these, Magic Picker and Mix Colors. Okay, switch over to Photoshop. Here we are inside Adobe Photoshop 2020 64-bit edition. And on the right-hand side, we have the color panel right over here. Now there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a nice color gradient as you can see right in here. There's a central color triangle, which matches this color spot right there on the gradient. And here we have our saturation, lightness, and darkness, and so forth, all contained in here. It's pretty easy to use. Across the top here, we have hue, saturation, and brightness slider controls. So here's one way to work with color here inside of Adobe's Photoshop program. The second one, of course, is the color picker. Just bring this up. It has a nice square color grid in the middle. And of course, our slider control in here for hue, saturation, brightness, so forth. And down here is hexadecimal one numbers. And here's your CMYK. Another way of working with color, of course, is to use the swatches over here. Swatches and the swatch color sets down below. And one more way to work with color here inside of Adobe is go over here to Window, come down to Extensions and the Adobe Color Themes. This allows you to work with combinations of colors and create combinations of colors based upon certain color standards, such as a triad. Here's one right there. So here's our main color, and I can then swing this around and get different combinations of colors based upon this. I can open or, or kind of compress this and so forth. So you can work with this to find colors that work well together. We have different color rules in here, monochromatic, there's triad, complementary, and so forth. So just another way of working with color here inside of Adobe's Photoshop program. If working with color is really important to you, you work with color as a graphic designer, package designer, things like that where color is extremely important, then you may want to have more control than you have from what's available in the regular Adobe's Photoshop program. And we can add in a lot more functionality here by using a couple of those new extensions from Anastasis. Go ahead and just get this out of the way. And I'll bring those up right over here on the left-hand side. We have the Magic Picker. Now I have this panel floating over here. You can dock it if you want to in one of the tabs here just like that or float it. And you can change the size right there. So have a size control or adjustment as well. So it's pretty easy to use. Now, at first glance, this looks very similar to the standard color panel over here, but there's a lot more to this. So let's see what we have in here. First, we have our colors up here, foreground, background, color, and notice that this is larger than our options over here, and a lot larger than we have over here on the standard Adobe color panel. We have our colors in here, slider controls right down here. Right now it's set at RGB, and we can also bring up actual values right there if you want to, you can see those values as well. In here, the standard gradient circle, and here is the main color, that's rectangle right there. That's similar to the circle right here. Notice as I change the circle over here, this adjusts. If I change this in here, this one adjusts. So it links right in with the standard color tools inside of Photoshop. Now, differences that you'll see in here, we have all of our values right there. This is similar, of course, to the color picker. We have our values, and there's our hexadecimal value right down there, for instance. So that's very similar. But there's a lot more stuff going in. Now, the color picker, of course, has a square display, and then the color panel has this circular display with a triangle. If I click on this button right here, there's our nice square display. So it's available right here with just a click of a button. I don't have to open up a second window. Okay, so we have those two options. Now in here, this little control, of course, works like that circle over there on the Adobe color panel. And then these 
work just like that other extension that we just took a look at. Let me just bring that up again here just for reference sake. And that's the color themes. So this works very much like the color themes over in here. Now this only has two. We see, you know, a bunch over here. So we can change our display on this. And this is the button right down here. Here's our default. There's complement. There's triad. Here's tetrad and a couple of analogic options as well. So we have different ways of working with our color. Let's just do the tetrad. There we are. I'll just pull this one out and see how those work together. And I'll go back to the triad. There it is. So we can work with this very easily, just like we can work with the Adobe color themes on the right hand side. Same kind of tools. Our main color is right here. Notice that this is a lighter outline. If I right click on one of these, this becomes the selected color. So I'll right click down here. That becomes the selected color. If I move this around, notice that the opposite side also moves in tandem with that. So very easy to control color. I can choose new colors just by clicking inside here. This is exactly the same as the Adobe Color Panel, but this goes even further on functionality. Right down here, there's a little button right there. This brings up a traditional color wheel. Here it is inside. So here's our traditional color wheel as well as our color gradient wheel. Now, if this isn't enough, we can actually change our view of this center color section. And that's right here. Click on this, there's a standard square arrangement. Sometimes this is easier to understand, easier to see. We also have a diamond shape in here. And getting even fancier, here's our red, blue, and green. And then we also have this cubic formation. So we have our full colors up here on the top, and then our lightness and darkness, color saturation, and so forth in here. So a lot of different ways of looking at your color. You can choose the one that works best for you, depending upon the color that you're working with. Let's just swing this back around over here, and I'll right click to bring that color to the fore. And let's move this over here right to the point. I just clicked in here and, and dragged right there, so that's full saturation, full color. Now, beyond this, it does even more. We're still not done with what this can do for you. Over here, it's a little icon right there. It's the same as any other panel. Click on that to bring up the pop-out menu. You have your compact mode here. You can attach panels and keyboard shortcuts. This is interesting. If we come down here to settings right there, this brings up the settings. And here we can set keyboard shortcuts for all kinds of things. Toggle color scheme, bring your temperature up by 10 or down by 10 or brightness up by 10 or brightness down by 10. Swap to the complementary of that color. And there's a whole bunch of these that you can control with a keyboard shortcut. This can really help you when you're working on a fairly complex image, has some interesting color shifts in there, and you don't want to be bringing this panel up all the time to work on your color, just set up keyboard shortcuts for doing a lot of this color switching work right here, right inside the Magic Picker. Where it says big colors, that's just this icon up here. I normally have my set at big. If I uncheck that, it goes down to a small size. I think big looks a bit better. It's easier to see, easier to use. There we are. So as you can see, it's highly customizable and shows you a lot more information and gives you a lot more control over your colors than with the standard color panel that comes with Adobe's Photoshop program. One more thing down here, the help section is right down there. Easy to get to, click on that little icon and then come down to help right there. Now that's just the magic picker. If you combine this with the mixed colors extension, it takes you a lot further. Let's go ahead and bring that one up right here. There we go. Right now this big color area here, this is my foreground color. I can adjust this using these sliders on the left and right hand side. There's also plus and minus buttons at the top and bottom of that. Down below here, this is a history of the colors that I've been working with. So I choose colors, this is gonna be building a history. We'll talk more about down below that in just a second. But I first wanna go over here and take a look at these things. Now these buttons allow me to mix these colors into this color in standard steps. If I click on this a couple of times here, it is adding in more yellow over here. And notice that the color here, it's working on this color right there. This is shifting around the gradient circle each time I click on this. So it's adding in a little bit of yellow here. And you can see it happening over there as well. You also can see where it is right here inside of the color gradient triangle. Now to get these colors, let's say I wanted to work with a specific color range. I'll make it the opposite over here just just for some variation, let's do that. I'll bring these around a bit further. So I have three colors now down here. I'm going to set these up as my three colors in here, and that's easy to do. Right click on a color, notice the white outline, that sets that as the foreground color. I can now click on this little eyedropper right here, and that then sets this spot at that color. Let's right click up here, that becomes a foreground color. I'll come down to our second one of these, click on the eyedropper, and that sets that one at that color. 
Let's go over here, right click on this one, a purple. Come down here, click on that little eyedropper, and that sets this one. So I've now set these three mixing controls, mixing colors, to the three colors that I had selected over here using this triad selection method. I can now use these to easily add colors in or adjust this just by clicking on these. You also can click on the little arrow right here and it brings up a slider control that allows you to adjust the color with a slider control. I can you know, mix in more or less of that color right there. So very easy to use to get really precise on your color in here. And it's easy to see your color, a nice large area to view from. Now down here, this is the history state. And on the right hand side right there, that's the current color on the right hand side. I'm gonna mix in some blue. I'll just click this and let it just add in blue just in steps here. Notice each time I do that, it gives me a new history state right down here. Now below that we have these groups, a gradient group and some color groups. The gradient group is made of this button right there. This creates a smart group. And what that does is it takes my foreground color and that's this one right over here. And there it is right there, foreground color. And the background color, that's the right hand side. And it gives me a series of gradient steps between the foreground and the background color automatically. If I change my foreground color, let's just right click on this green up here that changes that to the green. That changes here and I now I have a gradient from the new foreground color back to my existing background color. You can also create color groups, basically swatch sets down here and you can add colors to your swatch set. That's this button right there, this little new color swatch. This will take this color and add it to my color group. Right there I had the color group 3 selected. I could go up to the color group 2 and adding colors in here or down to color group three and add in my new color swatches right down here. So you can have multiple groupings of color swatches all contained here inside of this one mixed colors. Now over here on the right hand side, upper right hand corner, of course we have a little pop out menu right there. We have different thumbnails in here. I can import colors from swatches. I can export colors out to swatches. I can hide the brightness or saturation rollers. These are these two rollers right there. I can hide the additional colors. That's the stuff right down here. And here's your help option right there. And then settings right down below this. Go ahead and bring up our settings. And once again, you can set in keyboard shortcuts for all kinds of different things in here. So you can set up your color mixing with keyboard shortcuts, giving you color control right from the keyboard. So you can see how much more advanced all of this is than anything that we've seen over here in the standard Adobe Photoshop tools. So if you're really serious about working with color, again, this is great for designers package designers, graphics designers, any kind of designer that has to have very careful control of their colors, these two extensions used together as a set are extremely powerful. And if, if I was to give these two ratings, I would give these both five star ratings and I would add these onto my must have tool set if I was serious about working with color inside of Adobe's Photoshop program. Okay, so we've seen how powerful these are as far as the ability to work with and control colors inside of Adobe's Photoshop. Let's now pop back over to the Anastasi website and take a look at the cost and be surprised at how inexpensive these actually are considering how powerful these tools are. Here we are back at the Anastasi website. Let's take a look at the Magic Picker in here. This is my personal favorite of all of these tools. Let's bring this page up. Just click on this. It brings up a new page all about the Magic Picker. We'll click on buy now. Brings up the paying page, here we are. Right now, it's only $19. Now this is a limited time sale. I don't know how long this is gonna be on. 29 is the standard price. Notice down here, there also is a bundle sale on right now. So you can get the Magic Picker, Magic Squire, and Mixed Colors with a 50% discount. So really useful tool and really not that expensive at all. We'll go back and take a fast look at the Mixed Colors right here. Bring this one up. Once again, let's just scroll down here to the bottom. And we'll click on that buy now button, take a fast peek at this. And again, only $19 for that tool. Easily well worth this price. They're amazingly powerful tools and can really help you get complete control over your colors inside of Adobe's Photoshop program. So there you go, some great extensions to add into Photoshop that can give you a lot more creative control and ability. And again, it's at the Anastasi website right there. Easy to find, anastasi.com. I'll put a link for that in my description as well, so it'll be easy to get to. Okay, if you had fun with this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And of course, check out my YouTube channel for more fun Photoshop videos and reviews. And I'll see you next time.